A sign of things to come. A sign of things to come. I was living in a palatial antebellum home in Natchez, Mississippi. Quite frankly, it had more rooms I had not stepped into than those I had. There was a full-time maid, full-time gardener, and a full-time cook, well, and me. It was uh, where I lived during my first year of youth ministry. How about those digs, Avery? Yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> you know, in the, in, the, um, in the morning, if I dropped a towel, it was picked up before I could even bend down and look at it. And the gardener would bring around one of the four automobiles uh, for me to drive into the circular drive each morning. I preferred the stretched Lincoln. And every morning, I was asked by the cook, how do you want your eggs prepared? And every evening, do you want chicken, beef, or fish? Why, why, why was I there? Well, the family who owned the property were, well, summering in France, as people should do. Uh, and they wanted, to leave me, <laughs> they wanted to leave me in charge of the estate. <laughs> I was 20 years old. I was a rising junior in college. <laughs> well, anyway, I was living there when I invited Kay and her parents and my mother to come down from Birmingham for a visit. And so uh, they drove down from Birmingham down uh, to where, the, where we were. They're in Natchez, of course, is situated on the Mississippi River. And once Kay and I got the parents situated in their um, in, in, in their residences, uh, Kay joined me over at the home, the mansion. And of course the cook had made those little triangle sandwiches without the crust on them, uh, cucumber sandwiches and mint tea. She decided to serve it in the west music room, the east one having a bit too much sun. But um, anyway, there we were in the west music room and after Kay and I had finished our repast, I uh, gave her a manuscript that I had written. The manuscript chronicled our nine years of a relationship. That's right, nine years. That's what happens when you meet when one of you is 10 and one's 11. Uh, and Kay, as she does with all things, read the manuscript scrup scrupulously, you know, catching every word. And so uh, she read that, and then when she got to the last word, she looked indignant because the last word in the manuscript was and dot, 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 and dot, dot, dot. So she looked at me and said, what, what's this, and dot, dot, dot? And I uh, struck a knee, and I said, and will you marry me? And, um, yeah, take some tips from me. You don't have to have Facebook, okay? Uh, but... Um, Anyway, um, I then gave her the $250 uh, diamond ring that I had bought on installments uh, by, sending, by sending a money order every two weeks uh, to Birmingham to buy this, you know, this, uh, this ring. And I, I, I placed it on her left hand. And then, uh, surprising me, she lifted both arms and she looked up at the vaulted ceiling and she waved her arms and says, is this a sign of things to come? <laughs> a sign of things to come well you know uh, picture yourself in that mansion in uh, Natchez Mississippi and you'll get an idea of where Jesus is he is not in some shabby digs at Cana of Galilee it, it, these are not these are the beautiful people uh, these aren't the country folk uh, you can tell that by the number of stewards that are going back and forth. The servants is a nice way. Of the servants that are kind of marching back and forth. And the colossal, exquisite stone jars that only the wealthy would have. These are, the, these are truly the wealthy folks. They are at the Argyle or the Country Club or at Boudreaux's down on the Riverwalk, okay? This wedding reception is something else. And um, so... But mean, midway through the toast, Mary, uh, Mary, the mother of Jesus, elbows him and said, Son, son, they're running out of wine. And, uh, and Jesus uh, says, Woman, what's that, what's that to, to me? 
have them go down to Dan's and Benjamin's package store and buy some more. They have Dan's and Benjamin's. You get that? I thought it was pretty good. Uh, uh, but um, um, have them go down there and buy plenty of wine. They have the means to do so, basically. And he says, besides, my time is not yet come. My time is not yet come. And Mary being a uh, typical uh, Jewish uh, ma- or Alabama mama, uh, says, uh, just do whatever he tells you. Just do whatever he tells you. And Jesus, filling the bill of the typical Jewish or Alabama uh, son, takes a deep sigh and says, calls one of the waiters over and says, you see those big 25-gallon stone jars? Fill them full of tap water, then dip out, then dip out uh, a goblet full and take it to the maitre d'. Okay? You can imagine what the servants thought when he said that. What? But they do it because they feared Mary, I think. But uh, <clears throat> so they go, and when the when the head waiter, the maitre d, gets the goblet of 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 a liquid, he kicks back a deep draught of it. His eyes get as big as saucers, and he goes, "Magnifi! This is Chateau Lafitte." And then he looked to the bride's parents, and he goes. You have saved the best wine for last. But don't, don't you know the adage? Don't you know what people do? Um, they serve the best wine first, and when people get tipsy, they bring out the box wine. But you have saved the best for last. Wow. A sign. Now, after this, John, the gospel writer, adds an editorial comment. And he says, this is the first sign uh, by Jesus in Cana of Galilee, which manifested his glory and his disciples believed in him. This was the first sign. Now, just for a little background, John, the gospel writer, doesn't have a whole lot of interest in miracles. In fact, he only records seven of them. Mark, the shortest gospel, uh, is eaten up with, with miracles. There's 18 in quick succession. But John's interest in miracles only goes so far as, to sh- as for them to reveal, for them to be a sign that Jesus is the Messiah. He is the long-awaited one. He is our heart's desire. This, this, he is what we've been waiting for. That's his interest in miracles not the other. But it still begs the question. I mean, doesn't it beg the question? Okay, if this is the first sign, don't you want to get out of the gate a little stronger than that? I mean, don't you want to kind of maybe feed 5,000 ravenous people along a grassy hillside or, or cure 10 lepers at one time or walk across the angry crest of the waves in order to rescue the disciples or start off like Mark starts off by jousting with a demon? But instead, John begins this by this extravagant miracle for people who didn't need it or didn't think they needed it. Extravagant, an extravagant miracle. Why in the world? (laughs) Because this is, this is the sign we need, isn't it? In Jesus, the long-awaited one, the Messiah, God is not doling out his love on us. He's pouring it out on us. Did you do the math? Not only was it Chateau Lafitte, there were 150 gallons to drink. (laughs) Now that's a party. And that's the point. God is pouring out his love on us, even on those who do not think they need it. The head waiter is one of those those folks in John that makes a pronouncement he doesn't quite understand. But you you saved the best wine for last. Can you think about what Jesus is saying to the people gathered? They're all Jews. He's saying to them, your best days are not behind you. Your best days aren't behind you. Oh yeah, your best days weren't Abraham and Sarah making that perilous 
uh, journey. Your best days weren't Moses leading uh, Israel out of Pharaoh's grasp. Your best days were not the magnificent kingdom of David. Your best days are in front of you. Your best days are, round, are bound up with Jesus Christ. Your best days. Your best days are now. And they're going to march on. Wow. Wow. Extravagant. You know, John has another spokesman. See, we have a head waiter here. John is really a, mag really a very able craftsman. We have a head waiter pr pronouncing here, you saved the best wine for last, but in, 11, in John 11.50, you have the head priest make a pronouncement. But actually, it's a question. He says, isn't it best that we have just one man die for, for many? Is, wouldn't that be best? <laughs> yes, it would be best. The head, the chief priest, Caiaphas, doesn't know what he's saying. He has no idea what he's saying. One man will die for all of us. One man. And his blood will flow down like 150 gallons of Chateau Lafitte. It will come down off the cross. It will bathe us in it. And we will be changed. Only love changes. Only love changes. Hmm. 150 gallons, Chateau Lafitte. Jesus is a sign of the things to come. He is the sign of the things to come. Mark my word, it's true. And if he's a sign of things to come, my goodness, we have nothing, nothing but good days ahead of us. Don't mean there won't be some uphill struggles, but I do know it'll be good because he loves us that much. Does it matter that you believe that? Oh, yes. It matters. So many of us continue to believe that God is, is doling out his love and his mercy in thimblefuls. We continue to think, you know, golly, it's just not, there's not enough to go around. And therefore, what happens to us is our lives become constricted, inward-looking, tribal, and fearful. That's what happens to us. You're seeing it all over this land, and it's not of God. God's love isn't doled out. It's poured out. And it doesn't look anything like a contract. God hasn't made a contract with you. He's made a covenant with you. It is far different. And he sets all the rules and he sets all the parameters. And here's the parameters. I love you. I go to the cross for you. I'm pouring out my love all over you. I will, raise, I will be raised again and so will you. Our best days are ahead of us. Our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ is like a marriage. Did you hear Isaiah in the 62nd chapter? He says, you're no longer... Uh, you're no longer forsaken. I think that word is shamama. But you are now married to God. The word is Beulah. I got a home in Beulah land that outshines the sun. I got a home in Beulah land that outshines the sun. I got a home in Beulah land that outshines the sun. Look away beyond the blue. My mother sang that to me every week of my life. The relationship we have with God is like we're married to him. And we come up to this place where he's pouring out his love and we receive the sacrament and we realize, oh my goodness, there's so much more going on here. So much more. Our best days are in, ahead of us, not behind us, no matter what age we are. And I know that some of you are pretty well situated. And you might think that you do not need what Christ is giving. I can promise you that we do. We do. You know, when Kay raised her arms in that mansion and looked up at the vaulted ceiling and she waved her hands and she said, is this a sign of the things to come? She already knew that I was going to be a pastor. 
And in one month from that time, she was going to be made an RN. She was 19. We knew what kind of life we had signed on for. And it did include living in digs like that. But it was an indication of the life we would live. A life of so replete, so replete with surprise and love. And I know now, she was the first sign that God gave me.